Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about how we use our accessory movements to get stronger in our assistance movements. Because what we need to remember when we pick assistance exercises, they are exercises that carry movement pattern carry over to our main lifts. Now, a lot of you guys are going to say, well, what if my primary goals are hypertrophy? Well, I don't care. Everyone's primary goal is hypertrophy. That's the point that gets lost in, in the mix with all of this. You cannot really get stronger without getting bigger, right? Strength athletes are generally trying to maximize their muscle mass inside of their weight class. And they shouldn't be worried about getting too big because if they are, they picked the wrong weight class for their height. That's usually their issue if that, that happened. So that should be a non-factor for you unless you're obsessed with a specific weight class uh, that's maybe not ideal for your height. So everyone is seeking maximum hypertrophy. And if you get stronger overall, you tend to get bigger and vice versa. So this all applies. And even then, I would still say for people who are going to be drug free, who are trying to get as jacked as possible, you should probably train like a power lifter anyways or a strength athlete with a heavy focus on accessory movements, which is what we're talking about here is accessory movements. So this applies to you guys also. But for everyone else who understands the value of getting a primary lift up. All right, let's say that you've identified that for your bench press, uh, you need to be doing more incline press or more floor press. And as long as your incline bench, which might be what addresses your weak links in your bench press, goes up because you're thickening up the muscles involved, all right, so hypertrophy, along with joint angle specificity and movement patterns that carry over. So for example, as we've discussed before, let's say that uh, mid-range on your bench is your weak link. And you know, getting your chest to fire a little harder out of the bottom is a possible issue on your bench press. So you start doing more incline work to thicken up your whole upper chest. And because it's an exercise that lets you stretch the chest more at the bottom for a better stretch reflex in the flat bench, and it tends to force you to drift the bar further above your head. And we know for more advanced bench pressers, the bar path tends to drift that direction around that sticking point anyways that we think of is the, is the midway sticking point that's usually right after the bar transitions closer to your face coming right off the chest. And that's been noted by researchers and elite bench pressers that they have a very different eccentric versus concentric bar path, uh, especially for guys who are benching over 400 pounds raw or it's even more so guys over 500. This has been looked at by researchers. And so you find might find that the incline really helps you with that transition point, not just the hypertrophy. So let's say that the incline or whatever, the floor press might be a separate issue, but similar, is going to help you improve your bench. Well, doing an assist, assistance movement that you're not getting stronger at isn't really helping you, is it? right? Because number one, if you're not progressing, you're not creating new training stress, so you're not growing from it. Number two, if you're not getting stronger at it and putting more tension through those joint angles and movement patterns where you need to get stronger to improve your main lift, it's also a waste of time. Well, like with everything else, oftentimes we have to just switch assistance movements, right, when they stall. But does that have to happen? Well, no, not really. You might be able to run out progression on an incline bench a very long time. And I'm just using these as examples, guys. We could apply this to squat accessories, deadlift accessories, standing press accessories. But you could probably run it out a really, really long time if you're willing to adjust other variables. And so we would say, okay, I know that if I can build an incline bench, that my incline bench will build my bench press. And it'll thicken up my upper body. Well, how do we build the incline bench? Well, we come over to stuff like, say, tricep extensions. So this is a perfect example you guys see here. This is me actually having done a weight increase and a, a rep range change on my, my skull crushers. So let's say that you've identified that maybe you're a little slow near the top of your incline bench, which is good because we want it to be explosive off the bottom. That's why we're training it anyways for more chest recruitment out of the bottom of a bench press. But maybe it slows a little bit itself mid-range or near the lockout, which is going to be slightly more tricep emphasis. So if you build bigger, thicker triceps and stronger triceps, not just lose hypertrophy, what happens? Well, your 
incline bench should in theory go up because if it's slowing near the top you just have to get more tricep to blast through that and if you get to the point of where any given weight isn't slowing near the top you can add weight can't you right you can add weight if you hypertrophy and strengthen the muscles that work through that sticking point so as long as you can keep making tricep gains in that situation the incline will continue to slowly work its way up right of course it will so how do we do that well you have to actually start programming and training your tricep extensions really really hard so let's use an example of in my case what i had done previous to this and granted this video is not going to be out for quite a long time after i, I film it I tend to build these up over time but by the time it gets out people may look back and remember around the time it was filmed um, I had switched over from JM presses to skull crushers because I felt like I needed that better for my incline bench. And I needed just more direct, hard tricep work. Well, I was doing large numbers of sets, like 12s, and I was doing five sets of 10. The five sets of 10 was progressing, and then I decided to go over to three sets of eight, which is what you just saw there with some of that of the weight increase. Right? We went up another 10 pounds to do three sets of eight instead of five sets of 10. Because we had already established volume, all right, five sets of 10 is a lot of training volume on a small exercise. It built the movement pattern better, probably put some thickness on the muscle. And then to get continue to get stronger at it and get more just direct myofibular growth, drop the rep range and set slightly so that I could keep adding weight with good form, right? Because that's also what we're looking at. That will make the triceps stronger. And if those triceps get stronger, that incline should keep going up. So what we're doing is taking these very carefully selected accessory movements and finding ways to ensure we progress on them. And as, as silly as that sounds, sometimes programming your accessory movements will allow slow linear progression on an assistance movement. So in theory, a person could run the same blocks forever on their assistance exercises. Let's say incline bench. Let's say what I'm doing, 5x5 five five incline bench. And you add microplates here and there as you're able. Because you can use an accessory movement to address the weak links. In this case, skull crushers. Well, what happens if you can't program the skull crushers to keep going anymore? Well, your next solution would be to maybe put some chains on the skull crushers or to use a different tricep extension. You have to change exercises, one that you can keep progressing on. Because the point is we have to keep progressing on the assistance movement or the accessory movement. That's what we have to do. We have to progress on that accessory movement for it to continue to feed the assistance movement if we don't want to do any real programming for the assistance and just run it straight. So I could try chains next. If it stalls, that's probably what I would do because that's a different strength curve. And then run the skull crushers with chains as long as you can and still make progression. And it could be something as simple as adding, you know, a 12 pound chain to each side. And then if that stalls, I could add a 19 pound chain to each side and change the strength curve so that I can force the triceps to keep adapting with some sort of progression all the time to keep feeding the incline. And if eventually it gets to a point to where that's an issue, it might require doing some additional pec work. You might have to do some, some dumbbell flies, or in my case, I don't have dumbbells, I have chains. You might do some, some incline flies with chains to get more tension on the pec if the pec starts to become a limiting factor. So in other words, we can use these smaller exercises to feed the larger exercises and the incline bench is in and of itself a big heavy compound or multi-joint exercise and hypertrophy exercise right so it's going to add a lot of size and thickness also as long as it can keep progressing while at the same time feeding my primary movement the bench press so the point here is that if you can correctly identify the weakest muscles in an assistance movement you can rotate through accessory exercises such as this case triceps for for the incline bench to continually make slow steady progress at that movement and if it gets to the point where none of that works anymore then you might just have to adjust the loading on the uh, 
assistance exercise as well. But usually, I mean, that's not something we need to do immediately. That's stuff we can do by rotating these smaller exercises that address the weak link so that you thicken up your weakest link in the chain so that you keep progressing on the assistance exercise. And if you can keep progressing on the assistance exercise, if you've picked them correctly, your primary exercises will go up as well and you just will continue to get all around bigger and stronger. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.